Hello and welcome back to Wario Land 3. This is Bio Enchanted and today we're going to be seeing what else we can do with the ability to actually see in that formerly black water. So we're going to be heading to uh, the Sea Turtle Rocks because of course there was some black water there. But we don't need to see the entire route though because I've already broken these rocks once before. You already know the route. So instead of wasting your time making you watch me break every single wall again. Oh, once I explore a little bit of the above as well, just to see if there's anything else we can see beyond where the obvious route is. Also, I hope you enjoy the thumbnails I've been making because I've been trying to uh, be a little bit more elaborate with them. And so this particular one, I actually physically redrew the character that's in my little avatar of Carbon Coal in paint and kind of imported it into the thing. It messed with the colours a little bit, but I was quite proud of how it turned out anyway, because I'm not very good at drawing, and I wanted to at least try and do something a little bit more fun. And of course I drew a little uh, winter coat and hat as well, because of course it's... Uh, an upcoming level that's in this uh, particular video that I've put them in. I was quite proud in the mask one of the little hot dog I gave the uh, <laughs> character as well, because in my latest mask video I gave them a little hot dog in the, um, in the thumbnail, and I actually took the same colours from the hot dog Peggy has in the screenshot, so that it kind of matches the scene itself, and tried to add a little bit of a shadow on the carbuncle to make it look better, I was quite proud of that. But here's the area where we need to get to. So of course we need to get past these things, which right now aren't too much of a problem, but they can shock us. And of course we need to be Fat Wario. And somehow, well I guess there's a, there is a lot of sugar in apples. But yeah, here's the problem with that. Um, if we get hit by electricity, it forces the apple out of us. It's kind of like those machines you get on the internet that like, um, like electroshock your abs or whatever, but these actually work. It's quite a funny idea as well, it's like a funny way of getting rid of Fat Wario. But of course we have the red chest and the key, the key is very obvious where that is, so let's go into the golf game. And play some golf. But yeah, like if I, because uh, it'll be help very helpful as well if I get more patrons to be able to um, afford more art supplies and things like that, so that I can practice drawing more effectively and uh, have more tools to work with that sort of thing. But I'm having fun with what I currently have. There's the key, now that we've cleared the minigame very easily. And let's get the chest going. So there's one more level that um, we haven't done yet that we can now see the water in. So let's head back there, shall we? The frigid sea. This, of course, is the level that I put Carbuncle in. I've been having a lot of fun doing those. I feel I'm getting a bit better at them too. But at this point, the main thing is uh, trying to find the right entrance. And of course, it's actually in the second set, the second pool, so we don't really want to get forced into the first pool again, because that's really annoying. Because being forced into the first pool is just a waste of time, because we need to get to that door there. It's always embarrassing when you misjudge a jump like that, especially in a level like this where we've already done it multiple times. 
I do not have an excuse for that. It's just sometimes my brain forgets how to make these jumps. But here's the door. And there's the chest. But we need the key. It's so tantalizingly close. I love how frustrating that is. So of course we need to go through a little sort of, not quite a maze, but like a little series of passages. It's actually quite a straightforward series of passages, but it kind of feels a bit maze-like at first if you don't know the layout. Because it's really only two screens. But it feels... Um, but if you don't realise that, you can kind of trick yourself a little bit into thinking it's more complicated than it is. But it's just a matter of going to the right and then going to the left. We just need to not screw up going to the left. We don't need to be fat. This guy's just being rude now. I need donuts without a muffin. <laughs> there we go. Couldn't fill up the pipe. Yeah, that was just me checking something, because you never know sometimes where there's like a secret wall. Because, of course, there could have been like a coin there that wasn't, but there could have been. And at least when you get frozen, you kind of skip over the pits and go straight to these little divots, which is very kind of the game design to do that. Because the game could easily have just gone, nah, haha, you're going to the pit now, but it doesn't do that, which is very nice of it. And of course, this switch is something very interesting. It freezes the ice. Not well, freezes the water to make it ice, anyway. So now we have the key. But of course, how do we get to the chest? Well, switch again, really, innit? So this takes us back here. I quite like how when the little polar bears get hit, they kind of look like teddy bears, it's very cute. But there we go, back in the water, for the green chest. Of course, now we know why there was a number missing. There was a level we could have accessed at any time if we'd just known it was here. So now we finally have all four of the. Well, now we have the four levels. As opposed to being one, two, and four, which was very frustrating. Once we'd noticed it anyway. So the Castle of Illusions is kind of a somewhat fun little cheeky level with how it's laid out. Uh, I'm just going to kind of show you the first climb, even though it's not a successful one, because it has some very important stuff in that um, the rooms have particular things I want to show off on the way up. Like this one, you can barely see it, but that's a silver chest. Just need to kind of figure out how to get down there, but we also need the silver key, so let's not worry about that quite yet. This obviously has something to do with it, we need to get that down there somehow. It's quite cheeky how you actually do it, but we'll get to that when we get to it. You have to be quite careful because of these zombies, because of course there's a lot of these thin platforms, and Zombie Wario cannot jump very well. But these purple blocks can be broken by carrying an enemy. And that goes for these purple blocks up here as well. But that's irrelevant because that's the one colour chest over there. There is something over there, but it's just not what we're after right now. Of course, these switches are very important for the climb because they switch these blocks on and off. So we need to alternate as we climb this staircase to unlock new things. And of course, in each of these rooms, there's another chest. But we can't get the key yet, so the chests are just kind of there. But I quite like the way it sort of uh, Gives you a little bit of cheekiness with it, like that like a little gap that you can't get over because you can't jump when you're crouched. 
It's quite a fun little way of teasing you in this level, and also making this level feel a lot more open. In a way that's kind of similar to the Desert Ruins or the Sleeping Village, where uh, you can kind of see most places you can get to, it's just a matter of how you get there. But of course this castle is also all about illusions, so it's all about things being just out of reach, which is quite fitting for the type of level we're in. And of course here is why we screw up on this first one. And it's so annoying, because the key is so close! But yeah, here I actually make it, so... Let's not go through that entire climb again, there's no need for that. Now these zombies can go away. As I go into this bottom door, well, once I've looked over here anyway, and... Just to, to take a look, there's nothing here. For us yet, anyway. So now it's time to figure out this rather tricky little puzzle. It's tricky because it's not immediately obvious. You may think you'd need to grab the yellow thing and throw it through the floor or something like that, because there's no obvious breakable blocks. Uh, it's just very kind of a weird room, and it's tricky to work out the actual trick to it, because it kind of fools you into thinking that there's going to be a thing in a particular place, but it's not where you think it is. Because you think you might have to go down to the floor somewhere and throw that pink thing down to like a breakable block or something like that. But we're actually, you're actually thinking completely incorrectly, it's much simpler than you think. But in a way that's very weird, because it's a way that's never really done it like this before. Because normally if there's a wall to break, the wall's Wario's entire size, it's completely blocking a passage. Of course, sometimes they're not knocking that because sometimes you also might end up thinking there's something with those as well. Because remember those rose walls um, were only breakable by throwing enemies at them, but that's also well, we'll see. Yeah, that's a red herring. This room's quite tricky because it's really simple with how you get through it. It's so easy, but there's a little bit which is a bit tricksy about it. I found that quite interesting, <laughs> but it was in a way that I was able to figure it out myself because I started to kind of get wise to this game's tricks. Don't worry, it won't take too much longer to figure it out. Here's just me showing this off as well, though. Because this, this sort of thing with this guy, I just want to kind of mess around with this and figure it out. So I want to get him up here. So I want to just make sure there wasn't anything here that was missing. Because you can't really see that chest very well, so for all I knew it could have been uh, the silver chest. Maybe it could have been a different chest other than the silver one, because you can barely see it on the screen. So this is just me experimenting in this room to figure out the trick to doing this, because I only just did this later anyway. So we have to get this guy all the way up there, just by throwing him. And there we are! And I screwed up completely, because <laughs> I'm an idiot. So I believe this is where it kind of clicks. Also, the tricky thing with these pink things is, if you grab them um, and then let go by accident, or if you just nudge into them when they're on the floor, they will disappear and respawn. Or they'll actually disappear and you have to respawn them by leaving the room and coming back in, so you have to be very careful if you ever use these pink things. Because they don't stick around like other enemies do, as you can see there. Which makes figuring out things relating to them quite tricky. But again, this isn't actually the puzzle, I just get a bit lost here. Because this room's... again, it's... E it's easier than you think it is, but you wouldn't think to do... 
with the, what what you need to deal with what the game's already taught you because the game's already taught you you only break walls that are completely in your way. But it's done something a little bit cheeky. But I'll explain when I figure it out. Here we are. Those are actually solid blocks. We can only break them with a the shoulder barge. We can't butt bounce through them. But because of the way they're placed, you wouldn't think to do that, because you wouldn't think they were walls, because they just look like a platform. And before, again, the walls you charged to have generally completely completely blocked you. Or just been background areas, not really been blocking anything at all. So, that's just really cheeky game design there. But it's also a good way of kind of like getting you to think, what could I potentially do to do something with a block that I haven't tried before? But now we can get this over here and actually get in there. Now that we've got past that cheeky little puzzle. Now we have red of wolves. And this actually would have made this room a lot easier. Because now... Not only can we... Bounce hard enough to shake small enemies, which is quite nice. But we can also bounce hard enough to break purple blocks that are solid. We could have just broken straight through that floor. So that's quite fun. So join me next time as we explore these other levels with our new technique, being able to power drive through all those large blocks that we couldn't do before. So I'll see you next time, thank you for being with me, and have a nice day. Please remember to like, comment and subscribe, and also join my Patreon. Uh, thank you for James Rossi for already doing so at the Bio Enchanted Legs tier.